Dear students, you are welcome to this session. Um, my name is Kiden Robina. I'm going to take you through tissues. Uh, before we start, by the end of this session, students will be able to identify various parts and the structure of the human body tissue and membrane, identify various functions of the human body tissue and membrane, explain the interaction of human body tissue membrane structure and the functions tissue the tissue like we had mentioned before in our introduction to anatomy is a group of is a group or collection of similar cells they are intercellular substance that perform a particular function so when a group of cells are put together they form what we call a tissue. Our tissues are classified according to the size, shape, and the function of these cells. So the, the combination of the cells that uh, come together to form the tissue uh, makes the classification of the different tissues that uh, we have in our bodies as these cells perform the same functions. So let us look at types of tissues. There are four main types of tissue, each of which has subdivisions. So these four types include, we have the epithelial tissue or epithelium, connective tissue, or then we have the muscle tissue, then the nervous tissue. So let's start by looking at epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue, this group of tissue is found covering the body and the lining cavities and the tubes. The structure of epithelium is closely related to its functions, which include protection of underlying structures from uh, dehydration, chemical and the mechanical damage. Then the other function is secretion, then the other one is absorption. So mainly they occupy uh, tubular surfaces, tubes like, take an example, along the, um, along the respiratory system, we can find epithelial tissues there. So epithelial tissue may be simple epithelial tissue. Uh, here we mean a single layer of cells or can be stratified epithelial tissue here we have uh, several layers of cells. So in the simple, only one layer, and in the stratified, we have several layers of the tissue. So uh, let us look at the simple epithelium. The simple epithelium consists of a single layer, or uh, I mean a single layer of identical cells, the cells that are in the simple epithelium are identical, meaning that they resemble and is the only one layer. So it is usually found on absorptive or secretory surfaces where the single layer enhances these processes. The four types of simple epithelium include the following. We have the squamous or what can be known as pavement epithelium. So this is uh, composed of a single layer of flattered uh, cells. The cells fit closely together like flat stones. That's why they are called the flattered cells, forming a thin and very smooth uh, membrane. Is uh, found lining the following structures, such as the heart, the blood vessels, the lymph vessels, and the, the alveoli of the lungs, where it is also known as the endothelium. So those are the organs in which we find this type of tissue. Then we have the tuboidal, or what we can call tubical epithelium. So this consists of cylindrical shaped cells fitting closely together 
uh, lying on a basement membrane. So it forms the tubes, by uh, many tubules of the kidneys and it is found in some glands, as we shall see in the future. So columnar epithelium, this is formed by a single layer of cells, normally rectangular in shape on a basement membrane. It is found lining the organs of the alimentary tract and it consists of mixture of cells. Some absorb the products of the digestion and the other secrete uh, mucus. So basically that is their function. Then we have the columnar epithelium. Uh, this is still a continuation of the columnar epithelium. So here uh, we are talking about mucus is a thick, sticky substance which can be secreted by modified columnar cells called the goblet cells. So the goblet cells are the cells that are responsible for secretion of the mucus like the one that is secreted in the respiratory system and it can be seen through, uh, coming through the nose. Then we have the ciliated epithelium. This is formed by columnar cells, each of which has many fine hair-like processes called the cilia. When I was presenting um, the cells, I mentioned briefly that the cilia can be found along the uh, respiratory system or in, along the respiratory passages. So they are uh, uh, formed of many fine and hair-like uh, processes or uh, structures. So the ciliated epithelium is found lining the uterine tubes and most of them respiratory passages. So this I have already mentioned. So in the respiratory tubes, um, the cilia are the ones that are responsible for helping with the movement of the, the with movement of the ovum from the ovaries until it reaches to where it can be fertilized from. So they sweep the ovum as then it they, then the ovum moves from where it is released up to where it can be fertilized. Then we have the stratified epithelia. So when when the 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 plural form of epithelium is the epithelia, the singular is epithelium. So when we talk about the stratified epithelia, this consists of several layers of cells of various shapes. The main function is to protect underlying structure from mechanical wear and the tear. They are divided into two. We have the stratified squamous and the, the transitional. So let us look at the stratified squamous epithelium. This is composed of a number of layers of cells uh, of different shapes. In the deepest layers, the cells are mainly columnar and as they, they grow towards the surface, they become flattened and are then shed. Shed will mean that they, they are worn off. Uh, then we have the keratinized stratified epithelium. This is found on dry surface that are subjected to wear and tear such as on the hair uh, on the skin and on the nails that is why the nails keep on growing and getting off even our skin every time it uh, grows then it gets off and even the hair also the same so this forms a tough relatively waterproof protective layer that uh, pre prevents drying of the uh, live cells underneath so they have that uh, protective function that uh, they offer to our bodies then we have the non-keratinized stratified epithelium 
This is found on wet surfaces that may be subjected to wear and tear, but are protected from the drying. For example, the conjunctiva of the eyes, the lining of the mouth, the pharynx, and the uh, esophagus, and the vagina. So all these surfaces are subjected to wear and tear. So the nanny keratinized this stratified epithelium protects them from uh, any danger. <coughs> Then we have the transitional epithelium. This is composed of several layers of pear-shaped cells and is found lining in the urinary bladder. It allows for stretching as the bladder fills. So they have that function of allowing their uh, form of elastic in nature. So they can allow the stretching of the bladder uh, so that uh, the urine can be accommodated in it. Then we have the connective tissue. is the most abundant tissue in the body. The cells forming the connective tissue are more widely separate from each other than those forming the epithelium. So the connective tissue is known to be the most abundant in the body. So the functions of the connective tissue include a binding and structural support, protection, transport, then insulation. So cells of connective tissue, cells of connective tissue include the following. We have the fibroblasts, the fat cells, then the macrophages. Then the leukocytes and the mast cells. So let us look at the loose or the areolar connective tissue. This is the most generalized of all connective tissue. It is found in almost every part of the body, providing elasticity and tensile strength. So it connects and support other tissues, such as under the skin and between the muscles, they, they, because they are tensile, I mean they are elastic, they provide that elasticity and some tensile strength, meaning that uh, like something is elastic but you cannot be able to break it, that is what eh, it means, having tensile strength. Then uh, also supporting blood vessels and the nerves, then uh, they are found in the alimentary canal, in the glands supporting the secretory cells in the alimentary canal. This one has been repeated. The alimentary canal has been repeated twice. And uh, we have, let us look at the adipose tissue. So the adipose tissue consists of fat cells or what we can call the adipocytes containing large fat glo uh, globules in a matrix of areolar tissue. So there are two types. We have the white and the, the brown, but the, both of them consist of fats. The white adipose tissue, this makes up uh, 20 to 25 percent of the body weight in adults. The amount of adipose tissue in an adult is determined by the balance between uh, energy and the expenditure. So it is found supporting the kidneys and the eyes between muscle fibers and the under the skin where it acts as a thermal insulator and the energy store. So under the skin, uh, sometimes when you get a cut, you can see that you see something, some substance which is white. That white substance is what we are referring to, the white adipose tissue and it consists of fats that insulate the, uh, the, the, the body. They provide a, a little bit of warmth to the body. And they can also be broken down in times of need to provide energy. Then we have the brown adipose tissue. This is present in the newborn. When 
brown tissue is metabolized, it produces energy and considerably more heat than other fat contributing to the contributing to the maintenance of body temperature. In adults, it is presenting only in small amounts. So with this specific uh, adipose tissue, it is mainly found in the newborns and they were less in the adults. It's very, very important in uh, maintaining the temperature of the baby because we know that when a baby is born, the baby is exposed to uh, kinds of uh, low temperatures that he, he was not experiencing when he did. We have the dense connective tissue. This contains more fibers and fewer cells than loose connective tissue. Then we also have the fibrous tissue. This is made up mainly of closely packed bundles of collagen fibers with a very little matrix. Fibrocystic are few in number and they are found lying in rows between the bundles of fibers. So fibrous tissue is found forming the ligaments which bind bones together. So uh, ligament is the uh, that is structure in the body that connects bone to bone. Um, as an outer protective covering for bone called the periosteum. So can also be found as an outer protective covering for the bones. Also, as an outer protective covering of some organs, for instance, the kidneys, the lymph nodes, and the, the brain. Forming muscle sheaths called the, the muscle fascia, which extend between the muscle to become the tendon that uh, attaches the muscle to the bone. So, the tendon is also formed by the fibrous tissue. So the tendon is the one that connects the muscles to the bone. Let us look at elastic tissue. It is capable of considerable extension and recoil because it is elastic. It can extend, then it can go back to its original shape, which we mean, which we mean, uh, what we are referring to as recoiling. So it is found in organs where alteration of shapes is required. For instance, in a large blood vessels, uh, in large blood vessel walls, because when much blood is passing through, it means that the vessels will have to stretch. And this is where elastic tissues can be found. Also in the epiglottis, and the, the outer ears, all these areas are elastic in nature. So after having looked at that, let us look at blood. Blood is a fluid connective tissue. Uh, uh, apart from the other tissues that we have looked at, we also consider blood to be a tissue much as for it it is liquid in nature it is known as a fluid connective tissue why because it is made up of a number of cells that come together to perform a specific function and this can also be termed as a tissue so let us look at lymphoid tissue lymphoid tissue contain white blood cells or what we can refer to as the monocytes and the lymphocytes. So these are found in blood and in lymphoid tissue, in the lymph node, in the spleen, palatine and the pharyngeal tonsils, vomi, vomiform appendix. So all these are where these tissues are minimizing a white blood cells can be found. They can also be found in solitary and aggregated nodes, 
in the uh, small intestine wall of the in the small intestine then also in the wall of the large intestine so in all this we can find the uh, the uh, white blood cells the monocytes and the lymphocytes because they are important for the protection of the body so they are widely spread in the body to make sure that any danger that comes into the body they are able to fight it and protect the body from it let us look at cartilage cartilage is a much firmer tissue than any of the other connective tissues that we have looked at the cells are called the, the chondrocytes and they are less numerous. There are three types of the chondrocytes, I mean of the cartilage. We have the hyaline cartilage. This appears as a smooth bluish white tissue and it is found on the surface of the parts of the bone that form joints and also they are found forming the costal cartilages which attach the ribs to the stem then also forming part of the larynx trachea and the bronchia so we sh when we shall be looking at the respiratory system we shall look at uh, all this so the three types of cartilages are as uh, seen in the pictorial the right there so let us look at fibrocartilage fibrocartilage is a tough slightly flexible tissue and it can be found in uh, can be found as parts between the bodies of the vertebrae called the intervertebral discs those discs that are found between the vertebrae, the vertebrae, those bones that form the vertebral column. Then in between the articulating surfaces of the bones of the knee joint called the semilunar cartilages. On the rim of the bony sockets of the hip and the shoulder joints, deepening the cavities without restricting the movement that is why the um the the socket I and mean the shoulder you can be able to move your hand at 360 degrees without finding any restriction is because of the help of this cartilage then can also be found as ligament joining bones let us look at elastic cartilage. It forms the pinna or lobe of the ear, the epiglottis, and part of the tunica media of blood vessel wall. So when you look at the, the wall of the blood vessel, it has three layers, and the tunica media is the median uh, layer of the blood vessels so this elastic cartilage is found right there to make sure that in the blood vessel can be able to uh, to to stretch and the recoil without any problem let's look at bone bone is a connective tissue with the cells and these cells are known as osteocytes and they are surrounded by a matrix of collagen fiber that is strengthened by inorganic salts, especially the calcium and the phosphate. So this provides bones with their characterized strength and the rigidity. That's why bones are strong because of their uh, uh, because of the makeup, and this is self-explanatory. So two types of bone can be identified by the naked eyes and these are the compact bone and the compact bone is solid or dense uh, is solid or has a dense appearance. Then we have the cancellous or the spongy bone. This has fine honeycomb appearance like it's a little bit porous when you look at it. 
whereas the compact one is solid throughout. Then we have the muscle tissue. Muscle tissue is able to contract and relax, providing movement within the body and of the body itself. So there are three types of muscle tissue. We have the specialized contractile cells, which I'm sorry, which consists of the specialized contractile cells. And this includes the following. We have the skeletal muscle tissue. So this type of this type is described as skeletal because it forms those muscles that move the bones of the skeleton. Uh, here we have the striated I beg your pardon. Striated they are striated because striations strips can be seen on microscopic examination and voluntary and voluntary as it is under conscious uh, control. So here what we mean is that when you look at the muscles that move the uh, skeletal system or the skeleton, most of them are straighted. They have strips. They have, uh, let me, in simple terms, I can say things like threads that when you look closely, you can see them. Those are the ones that we are referring to as the strips. Or, and if because of that, the muscles are referred to as being straighted. Then, because you move consciously, if you want to go to a point, uh, a, a point B, you move consciously, you know you go to point B, you do it consciously, not uh, unconsciously. That is why we call them voluntary, because you intend to do to, to move, you intend to use your muscles, then you do so. So right there we have the skeletal muscle tissue. Uh, this is what I was telling you that they are they have strips or they are straighted. This is what I am meaning. If you look closely, there are some things that you say they look like threads. Uh, this is what I am meaning. So let us look at the smooth muscle tissue. The smooth muscle muscle may also be described as non-straighted, visceral, or involuntary. So it does not have stretions and is not under conscious control. So with this type of muscles, they they don't they don't have uh, those strips that we looked at in the in the in the straighted muscles, then they or they act involuntarily. You don't intend. You don't intend. Like for instance, the muscles that are found in the liver, you will not intend that I want my my liver to function, but they can function. They they can move involuntarily. For instance. Let me not actually emphasize on the liver. Let me emphasize on your alimentary canal. Your work is just to eat the food. When the food moves in, there are some contractions that happen in the uh, intestines. Then they allow the food to move. Digestion has to take place as the food moves. So all this is it. Uh, happening involuntarily you are not controlling you're not saying that now let the food move from point a to b no you are the food is moving involuntarily so this is what we are referring to so smooth muscle has the intrinsic ability to contract and relax so you don't need to control it smooth muscle tissue uh, this is a continuation additionally Autonomic nerve impulses, some hormones, and local metabolites stimulate the contraction. So that uh, kind of contraction that I already described that you don't control it, it happens involuntarily, is controlled by autonomic uh, nerve impulses, some hormones, and the local metabolites. 
So it is found in the walls of hollow organs, hollow organs uh, regulating the diameter of blood vessels and the parts of the respiratory tract, like I already mentioned earlier on. Propelling contents of the ureters, ducts of glands and the alimentary tract. Expelling contents of the urinary bladder and the uterus. So those are the areas in which we find it is in smooth muscle tissues. So you don't control the act on uh, their own. Then we have the cardiac muscle tissue. This type of muscle tissue is found only in the heart wall and not anywhere else. So it is not under conscious control, but when viewed under a microscope, cross strips or striations uh, characteristic of skeletal muscle can be seen. So this is, it has unique characteristics. That is why it has characteristics that are for only for uh, the cardiac muscle and the nothing else. When you look, when it is studied closely, it can be seen that there are some cross strips that are within it. And we had said earlier on that the cross strips, or I mean the strips, are uh, characteristics of skeletal muscles. But in this case, we still, if we observe closely, we can find them in the heart wall. So each fiber or cell has a nucleus and one or more branches. So the heart has an intrinsic pacemaker system, which means that it beats in a coordinated manner without external nerve stimulation. So the stimulation of the heart does not come from uh, anywhere else. It does not involve the hormones. It does not involve any other uh, stimulator, but it has what is called intrinsic pacemaker system. It is within the heart, and it is the one that uh, starts or initiates. And once it happens, the, the, it coordinates the beating of the heart, and the beating of the heart is coordinated in a, a specific manner, in a specific manner. And that is why when it deviates from the normal way that we know it beats, then we are worried that there is a problem. Function of muscle tissue. So muscle functions by or alternating phases of contraction and the relaxation. When the fibers contract, they become thicker and shorter. Uh, skeletal muscle fibers are stimulated by motor nerve uh, impulses originating in the brain or spinal cord and ending at the neuromuscular junction. Smooth and the cardiac muscle have the intrinsic ability to initiate contraction. In addition, contraction is stimulated by autonomic nerve impulses, some hormones, and the local metabolites. So basically, they are the ones responsible for the contraction. Nervous tissues. Two types of tissue are found in the nervous system. We have the excitable cells, and these are called the neurons, and they initiate, receive, conduct, and they transmit information. Then we have the non-excitable cells. These support the neurons. Let us look at membranes. Membranes are sheets of epithelial tissue and they are supporting connective tissue that and they are supporting connective tissue that cover all live internal structures or cavities. So the main membranes are 
we have the mucous membrane this is the most uh, lining of the alimentary can uh, alimentary tract respiratory tract and the genital urinary tracts and is sometimes referred to as the mucosa so in most cases when we are referring to to them uh, we refer to them as the mucosa mucosa all the time so they are the ones that are important for lining of those traps because those traps in most cases are supposed to not in most cases they are actually supposed to be kept moist all the time and the, this uh, mucous membrane help in the, uh, secretion of uh, the mucus that moistens those the uh, tracts. Then we have the serous membrane. The serous membrane or serosa secretes serous watery fluid which cover the surface of the membrane. So the serous membranes are named according to their location. We have the pleural membrane. This cover the lungs. Then we have the pericardial membrane. This cover the heart. Then we have the peritoneum, peritoneal membrane covering the peritoneum. Let's look at the synovial membrane. This membrane is found lining the joint cavities and the surrounding tendons, which could be injured by rubbing against the bones, such as over the wrist joint. So this is self-explanatory. So functions of different types of tissues and membranes. We have the epithelial tissues. They protect underlying structures, act as barriers, preventing the movement of many substances, permit the passage of substances such as carbon dioxide and the oxygen, then secrete substances such as sweat glands, and then also absorb substances as some contains uh, carrier molecules. Remember when we were talking about in the cells, we looked at the carrier molecules and we said that they are the ones that are uh, needed or they are the ones that carry out what is called the uh, active, um, uh, active transport. They carry the molecules from one side of the, uh, from one uh, area to another across the membrane. Connective tissues. The connective tissues enclose and separate organs such as liver and the kidneys. Connect tissues to one another such as tendons and ligaments. Support and allow movements, e.g. skeletal system. Then storing, e.g. adipose tissue, stores high energy molecules. This we have looked at it. Connective tissues, their function is cushioning and insulating, e.g. the skin helps to conserve heat. Then transporting, blood transports substances throughout the body. Then also protecting here we are talking about the immune cells because they protect the body against the toxins and the tissue injury this i had explained about how the white blood cells also protect the body and they are counted as part of the connective tissues muscle tissues their functions is attachment aid in movement relaxation and the contraction of the body, helps in flexion of the body, cardiac muscles responsible for pumping action of the heart, then regulate the size of organs. So all those are the functions of uh, muscles. Then nervous tissue, nervous tissues, uh, important in coordination of various body activities, control body activities, conduction of action potential. Then membranes, 
The functions of membranes are protection, absorption, secretions of fluids. So the key points that we, we have to take seriously, tissue is a group or collection of similar cells and they are intercellular substance that perform a particular function. So tissues are classified according to the size, shape and function of uh, these cells. The main functions of tissues and membranes are protection, absorption, supporting, connection of tissues, transportation, and institution of substances. So on evaluation, after reading this, you can evaluate yourself by asking yourself these questions to see if you can be able to answer them well. Define the term tissue membrane. Mention four types of tissues. What are the five main functions of tissue and membranes? Thank you so much for paying attention to this. God bless you.